Hey guys, it's Robin, our Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today we are going to take our herringbone blocks and make them, we're going to make them look pretty. We're going to take them from this mess that it looks like when we finish getting it all stitched down, and then we're going to go ahead and trim them up so that they look like this, all nice and pretty. It's a very simple process. Anyone who's done Quilt As You Go or if you've done paper piecing like string blocks where you sew your paper, your fabric right on the paper, you've already done things like this. But we'll just go ahead and take it step by step and I'll walk you through it and I'll give you any little tips and tri tricks that I might have figured out along the way so that your blocks can go from this, I always think of it like a hairy mess that it needs a haircut, down to this nice and trim block makes a big difference. You wouldn't think that something that looks this large is going to actually trim down to something that looks like this. But it does. So come on over to the cutting table and let me show you how I do it. Now that I have a bunch of squares or rectangles, I should say, a bunch of blocks all sewn down, I'm going to go ahead and trim these up. Now, if you remember, I said I'm going to use my blocks. They're going to be six and a half by 12 and a half because I have this fancy fancy ruler, the square and up ruler. It's 12 and a half inches square. Now, one of the things that I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to check my four corners. Those are going to be my most important spots because I want to make sure that I have batting in all four of my corners. Now these two corners diagonally, they have, the fabric is just coming out, so there's going to be fabric in both corners, but these two corners have the fabric, it's one piece of fabric that covers that entire corner. Now, because I know I'm going to be trimming up some, I didn't worry about this little piece of batting sticking out. This one has plenty, it has extra. So when I go to make my first cut, I'm going to make sure that when I put my ruler down here in this corner, that when I line up my first cut, I'm going to make sure that I don't go all the way out here because then I would have, I would have a piece of batting with no fabric on it. It would go into the seam allowance more than likely, but I'd rather just move it back a little and make sure that my corner stays inside the batting and that there's fabric around both sides of that corner. I'm going to also watch the opposite corner up there and make sure, but this one has the fabric going all the way over, but I want to just make sure that when I'm cutting it that I'm not cutting it off the batting. I'm going to stay inside all the perimeter of the batting. That's why I went with an extra inch all the way around if I had that enough of my batting when I pieced it together. Gives me a little bit more room to go around. Now it is going to generate more scraps here, but it's okay because I am, after making my crumb curtain, I'm totally out of crumb scraps, so this will go ahead and generate some more crumb scraps for me, so if I want to make some more crumb blocks, I'll have them. When I was getting to the end of my curtain, I was actually pulling out strips of fabric like this and creating scraps because I, I'd run out. Now I know I'm going to be doing the 12 and a half inches this way, so I need to make sure that my entire ruler is in between the batting. There's batting over on the top and the bottom. Now I need to watch this way to make sure that I'm going in and it's going to be six and a half inches this way. So I need to make sure my six and a half, I don't make my first cut so far over that I don't have enough room on this side to make it a full six and a half. So you're just going to kind of watch all the way around your ruler on all four sides, even though right now we're only going to be trimming two sides at a time. I have one of those spinny mats, but I believe it either is just at 12 inches or a little bit shorter so it's easier for me to just go ahead and put it on my big mat and then spin the piece around. There's no pieces that are going to get loose or going to get because I did the quilt as you go. I don't have to worry about bias or anything like that so it's fine to just flip it around. A little bit hard to get the whole thing in the picture here. So I've got this. I make sure that my six and a half is right here. I'm cutting off some here. I made sure my corner is going to have fabric everywhere. Now, as I said before, I'm not very, I wasn't being extremely careful about the 45 degree. So if I cut it a little bit wonky, it's not going to bother me too much. You could take your, your 
center line of your ruler right here and put it right on one of your stitching lines so that you know you're squaring it up according to one of your lines. Now that's if you followed every line is at the perfect 45 degree angle. You can choose like I did right up here. I have this, I can see my quilting lines where I put my uh, quarter inch seam allowance when I put my two fabrics together. So I could line up my diagonal right on there. Like when we do the half square triangles and we want to make sure everything's even, I can do that. And that allows me to have plenty down here in my corner. And I have the six and a half all the way through. Now that might not work out perfectly for every square. I don't, every uh, block, cause I'm really not sure for me, cause I have the different size strips that I put in there. So it might be just something you're going to have to play around with a little bit. I'm just going to be more concerned about my corners down here and making sure I have fabric in them. I'm actually using my good cutter and not my paper cutter because even though I'm going through batting and it's going to dull this blade, I know I have more blades here at home. I don't have to purchase any more right now. And I want to make sure I've tried using my paper one before, but it is a little bit duller because I take, when I replace a new fresh blade in here, remember, I take this blade and I put it in my paper cutter. So this one's a little bit dull and it's a little bit harder to go through the batting with a dull blade. And if you're going to have problems like that, there's a really good chance that you could slip and cut yourself. That's not fun. We don't need to have any injuries that's going to keep us from sewing. So you may feel like you're wasting a good blade, but it's okay. You're really not. Because going to the doctor and getting stitches in your finger or cutting the tip of your finger off would cost you a lot more money than replacing one blade. Use a coupon. It'll be okay. I just like to cut back a little bit on my corner. And I just follow all the way through. Then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the top off at the same time. I pick my block up, grab it in the corner that's cut on both sides, spin it around. And now when I go to cut this piece, I'm going to line up my six and a half inch, because that's the size of my block. So I'm going to line up six and a half inch over here. And I've already cut the bottom, which was my top before. So I'm going to line my ruler up right along here and right along here. So when I trim this off, it's going to be six and a half by twelve and a half or whatever size you choose to make. And there's your finished block. Now all these pieces, like I said, I'm going to keep these for crumb blocks. What I'm going to do for now, because I have a lot of blocks to cut, I'm just going to throw them all in this box. And then one time, when I, another day or two, I'm going to be sitting down watching a YouTube video. I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll tear off. Sometimes I might have to use my seam ripper if I want this, or I might just cut this piece of fabric off. And I'll separate all the pieces and I'll put them in my crumb block. And if it's a small piece that I really don't want, like say maybe I don't want this triangle, I'll just go ahead and throw it away, it's okay. Some people do like to use it for stuffing in pet beds and other people make crumb blocks no matter how small the pieces are, but I kind of gotten a little bit picky and choosy. I know what I like to work with now and I just save the sizes I know I will enjoy sewing with. We each have our own preference of fabric colors and textures and sizes that we like to work with. So whatever works for you, just go ahead and work with that. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Now, because I use the larger squares, the larger strips down in the corner, now I don't have this little itty bit piece here. I do have a smaller amount of fabric here, so I might lose some of that when I'm stitching it together, whether I used a quarter inch or the half inch. So I could be losing a good chunk of that and just having a little bit in the corner, but that's okay. It's something you learn and practice as you're going on. Sometimes I don't always pay attention to what I'm putting in the last strips uh, when I'm doing a project like this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a few more. I'll speed this section up, but you guys can go ahead and still see what I'm doing. See how I got that little corner there? I'm going to lose most of that in the seam allowance, but it's 
it's already quilted it's got the batting on it it's not a really thick seam as if you were making when you're putting blocks together and you have that situation so it's okay you know lesson learned it doesn't really bother me that much So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just keep cutting these up, trimming them down to the six and a half by twelve and a half, and I'll show you what they look like. And there are some of my blocks. As you can see, it's not, it's not like oh herringbone where you see everything lines up really perfectly, but it kind of gives you the feel of it, and that's all I was looking for with this quilt. I didn't need it to be exactly. Now if I had used all the strips the exact same size it would have worked out that way nicely. Now, of course, I still have a few more to make, and I'll probably play with them a little bit more so I don't have the whites going together. I'd like to have them spread out a little bit more on the quilt. But this is only a handful of the blocks. Just a little reminder, when you're doing this and you're, you're cutting up your blocks and you're squaring them up and everything, remember, your ruler is see-through. Now, I've already trimmed them all, and then I thought about telling you this, but you have all those strips of fabric coming out on all four sides, so you see where your pieces of fabric are. Your ruler is see-through. Just kind of move it around on your block, your batting and stuff. Make sure you're in your six and a half by 12 and a half, if that's the size you're doing. Just move it around until you see it exactly where you want it, and you have all four corners in a nice position, and you know you're getting batting in all four sizes, all four edges and then do your trimming. It makes it a lot easier this way. That's why I like to go a little bit larger when I stitch mine. So I have more of a, a movement around and I can choose where I put my blocks. Okay, next up, I'm going to go ahead and rearrange these into the quilt, the pattern that I like, the way my quilt is gonna look in the end. And then I'll stitch them together and I'll show you how we do that. 